All our lives we've been taught to do a full range of motion, from the bottom all the way to the top. Or the opposite, depends on the exercise. But who said you can't build more muscle with just half? the range of motion. That's exactly what these three studies show. That partial range of motion when the muscle is lengthened builds more muscle than a full range of motion. But there is a catch. These studies were done on beginners, all of them, until a week ago. And a quick reminder, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like and I won't be angry if you comment as well. Now. Let's get started. A week ago, a new study came out, and the reaction to it went absolutely berserk on social media. Lengthen partials versus full range of motion. And here's how all of it went down. The study looked at trained individuals with an average of approximately five years of experience. Here's a video of them in action. This is the first ever study done on trained subjects in this area. They followed an upper body workout routine using the exercises you're seeing now on the screen. But with one difference. One arm did half reps, while the muscle was in a more lengthened position, that is, more stretched, and the other arm worked through a full range of motion. This is a great study because it used a within-subject design. It means each participant had both groups within themselves, so it's much easier to spot the difference between both arms. Plus, you don't need to split them into two groups, which statistically lowers the chances of getting a false positive, meaning seeing a difference where there isn't one, and also a false negative, which is not seeing a difference when there is one. Then they measured which arm grew more. Results. After two months, the muscle growth in the biceps and triceps was identical in both arms. But there's a problem. Only three hours after the study was published, this guy, exponential, who has 700k followers on TikTok, posted a video about it. Who gets more muscle growth? Now, this guy is super famous in the field. A year ago, he was screaming about how exponential this graph was. Exponential. Saying failure is better. Not only did failure show better results. And that we have known this for years. I mean, I've known it's better and I've been telling you guys this. Then six months later, after a new study came out, he switched sides. Consistently, the literature has shown that close to or to failure produce similar results. Yeah, consistency is key. And just three hours after this new study was published, he summed it up with this. The finding of the study was that partial range of motion provided no additional benefits. And this is what happens when you summarize an Instagram post instead of reading the research itself. I am simply here to provide the findings of a study that I saw on Instagram. Yeah, super scientific, but it's not true. Exponential. Doing half the range of motion and getting the same results as the full range is a huge benefit. And that's with trained individuals. But this is what happens when you don't read the 30 plus pages of the study. Because when you do, the results are very different. While there were exercises for the back and chest, the latissimus dorsi and the pectoralis major, they didn't measure the back and the chest. The only muscles they measured were the biceps and triceps. And even this is not 100% precise. The biceps measurement was defined as the elbow flexors, which could potentially include the brachialis muscle. So this study only really applies to about two muscles. Not that there is no benefit. Full stop. Partial range of motion provided no additional benefits. But even with those muscles, there's still an issue. The measurement was taken at 45% and 55% of the humerus bone length. In plain English, if this is your arm bone, the measurements of the muscles were taken here and here. And based on the participant's photo, it's exactly here and here. But that could be the biggest limitation of the study and it could change the entire outcome. Muscles don't always grow evenly along their entire length. Unless you're subscribed to the channel, then they grow everywhere. We know from many studies, both those comparing length and partials to full range of motion and those comparing partial lengths alone, that growth after length and partials tends to occur more in the distal part, which means not here, not here, but here. But in this study, for some reason, they didn't measure the distal part of the muscle. Technically, if they had measured the distal part of the muscle, the growth in the length and partial range might have been much more significant. And that one measurement could have changed the entire result by raising the overall average up. So measuring just part of the muscle and saying there is no additional benefit, no additional benefit, is not precise. And it's kind of like asking how your day was only a couple of hours after you woke up. It doesn't work like that. Exponential! Also, in the study, in page 20, they mentioned four studies, which you can see now on the screen, arranged very nicely, that supposedly compared length and partials to full range of motion. But 
that's not accurate. Two of these studies didn't actually compare lengthened partials to full range of motion. And you can see that if you read the full text. One was on the leg press which Jeff showed on his video, but the partial range of motion was negligible and the full ROM wasn't really a full ROM. It's all written in the full text, 10 pages, knock yourselves out. The second one was the GOTO study which was on the triceps, but it wasn't a long length in partials, rather a middle ranged partial. And that's the difference between the two. Long length and partial, middle length and partial. Long length, middle length, middle length, long length. That study is also 20 something pages, which will also be in the description. You're more than welcome to read it with your morning coffee. So to summarize, as of now, there are three studies showing that a length and partial range is better for building muscle more than a full range of motion. Those are in untrained individuals and one study showing no difference in trained individuals. But if they had measured the distal part, there might have been. So if you have a weak day or a weak week at the gym or you feel pain when you're training in the shortened part of the lift, you can do half reps in the lengthened position and probably get the same if not better results. That can be a great strategy for training through pain if your pain comes when you're in a shortened position or if it's very hard for you to do a full range of motion let's say in a pull-up for example although to date we don't have any studies checking hypertrophy in the latissimus dorsi the muscle we aim to work in pull-ups if the exercise is hard for you to perform you can do only length and partials while trying to achieve failure or stopping one to two reps shy and you'll probably build decent amount of muscle mass don't forget to leave a like and subscribe i told you i won't be mad if you share as well and i'll see you in a bit